Hey folks, Pastor Susie Berba here from First Congregational Church of Braintree in Massachusetts. I greet you today from Nantasket Beach in Hull, Mass. It's my home and it's my second time greeting you from this location. But today I am out here bright and early for the sunrise, which is going to be taking place right behind me. Um, so I really hope that you enjoy this view with me today. For this week's edition of Food for the Soul, I want to talk about Sabbath. Sabbath is something we don't give a whole lot of time and consideration to what keeping the Sabbath means, but it is worthy of our attention. It is, after all, in the Ten Commandments. So let me read from Exodus 20. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and it is all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. God blessed the seventh day. In this instance, God didn't sanctify an event or place or even an activity. God sanctified time. And considering like the idea of obey the Sabbath or follow the Sabbath, that feels very burdensome in many ways. It conjures up some crazy ideas. Maybe you've lived through or heard stories about sort of seamless restrictions for Sabbath activity. But I'd like to look at it in a different way. The call to obey the Sabbath or observe the Sabbath. It's God is in sanctifying time and inviting us to actively and willingly participate in sacred time. So there are some things that get in our way of considering Sabbath. Um, one is the weird rules that we've maybe heard of, and the other is also this idea of having a fall day off each week. Certain life circumstances with work and family pressures, having a full Sabbath day isn't always realistic for folks. I'm not going to pretend that it's easy to do. And so I have some ideas about that. When we think about observing Sabbath, there are two things to consider. It's when and how. The when involves both what day of the week, for many Sunday, uh, for those who work, it's it's going to be a different day of the week. I take Sabbath on Mondays. And also the when, if your circumstances are such that a, a full day is just completely unrealistic, I invite you to consider carving out maybe three hours of Sabbath once a week, where it is time to be intentional about being in God's sacred time. The other thing, as I said, so there's when, and there's also how or what. So how do you observe sort of Sabbath? What do you do with Sabbath? For some, it does involve going to church in the morning if you observe on Sundays and if, if you're not church staff. Um, but really, it has to do with acknowledging the sacredness of the day. I have certain Sabbath sort of rules and regulations for myself. And I look at what things make me feel numb or alienated from God. Those things I do not include in Sabbath activities. For example, uh, I can feel sort of alienated and isolated through if I have to go shopping, if I'm going through the grocery store and running errands. That's kind of alienating. So for me, shopping and errands is not a Sabbath activity at all. Additionally, Time on the devices, the phone, the computer. If it's time to connect with others through texting and conversation, absolutely. But if it's time just to sort of window shop on the internet or peruse social media or play a mind-numbing game, for me, those aren't life-giving, so I don't include those in my Sabbath time. 
So the, the hows of following Sabbath are going to be a little different for each person. So it's what is your personal Sabbath operator's manual? I don't want to call it a rule book, so I called it an operator's manual. For some people, it involves connecting with others. For me, that's a big part. I heard it once talked about as Sabbath as time to pray and play. So I added to that connect, pray, play, connect. And the praying is very much about connecting with God. It's kind of an important element of Sabbath. Playing nurtures the soul. It might be hobbies. It just might be going out for a walk. Uh, for me, connecting could be with loved ones or also connecting with the earth. Here I am, and hopefully you are a little bit with me too, connecting with the earth through the sunrise happening behind me here in Hull. So think of Sabbath as pray, play, connect, just be with God and be in sacred time. I invite you to consider these ideas about keeping the Sabbath. Many blessings to you.